Welcome back to Tactical Blue. This is your host Hector Solis. Today we're going to talk about important issues regarding gun control. Uh, this is going to be a audio only video and soundtrack for the podcast. Uh, there's not going to be no me today because I I'm not well dressed. So we're, we're just going to leave it like that. Today's topic is going to be the red flag gun laws. Is this a legal way to violate people's rights? So as you heard before and the headlines lately, you know, there's a lot of mass shootings happening here in the United States and around the world. The latest one is in New Zealand, which over 50 people die because of a subject who opened fire inside a mosque while uh, people were doing their daily prayers or started the implementation of uh, Ban banning the AR-15 assault rifle and any other gun used during the mass shooting. Now, uh, more people want to prevent these atrocities as well as us as law enforcement, right? However, this issue can create problems because some of those mass shootings are not carried just by ide ideological or fanatics. Some of those people are actually mentally ill. Different law enforcement investigations have concluded that people with extreme mental illnesses have committed these crimes. In some cases, the family of those responsible for the shootings saw different um, characteristics or signs that an imminent attack was about to happen, but they failed to inform the proper authorities whether, whether it is law enforcement or mental health institutions. So these people, you know, they did not wake up just one day and say, hey, I'm just going to start hurting people, okay? This is a progressive uh, realization and progressive illness, which it got worse and worse. In fact, there's a lot of people who will not hurt other human beings, even though they have mental illnesses. So there is this um, book, audiobook that I listened to. It's called The Gift of Fear by Gavin D. Becker. Uh, I hope he's, I say his name right. I recommend this book for any law enforcement officer. This uh, author is very experienced and has worked with different federal law enforcement officials in preventing and trying to find the perpetrators of different attacks or um, like, for example, when a congressman or the and any justice of the Supreme Court gets, you know, uh, threats or letters or things like that, he analyzes and uh, he usually finds, you know, the, the perpetrator, which, believe it or not, is somebody really close to them. So in his book, he explains that humans have developed tremendous tools to guarantee their survivals. Um, over 200,000 years of evolution, we got this thing called gut feeling, right, or instinct, Police officers, you know, uh, when you go to a call or you do a traffic stops, you start having that gut feeling that, uh, that in the back of your, your neck, those hairs start rising and you know there's something wrong. But that is not reasonable suspicion. Although it can be if you start digging, asking more questions, you find what you're looking for eventually. The same thing is for the court system, right? Uh, now, law mark makers believe that if you feel somebody's a threat, then you must take their guns away. These law makers, they started new laws, uh, also known as red flag gun laws. These red flag gun laws are uh, also called extreme risk protection order. It's a fancy name for the red flag gun laws. Uh, this is uh, a legislative statute will help law enforcement strip anybody with a mental illnesses from possessing a firearm while undergoing evaluation, all right? And sounds all handy dandy, but the problem will be they might be violating some people's rights. Police officer will have to apply for a warrant with a judge, which the judge after finding, it's not even probable cause, okay? After finding it is reasonable, the judge will find uh, a credible and substantial fact the person is in danger to themselves and others. Then the officer might seize the person's firearms for some time. And some time meaning it can be two weeks, three months, a year or more. 
Now, is this really a violation of the person's right to due process? Well, the answer is a little complicated. In some states, for example, the ERPO can only be filed by police, while in other states, like, for example, California or Maryland, spouses, roommates, and close relatives can ask the court to remove the firearms out of this, you know, out of the people's hand for safety concerns. And that is where the problem starts, because if, let's say, it's a roommate, and uh, just put a wild example, this roommate has, this person might have a mental illness, which, is, which might be manageable with a mental health professional, but if this person starts saying, well, he said this, he said that, now what? We're going to take this person's firearms away just because they say so? Mm, that's where the problem starts, right? Now, while removing the firearms can be seen as a violation of the person's Second Amendment rights, many law enforcement express their desire for a fair due process using the totality of the circumstances before taking the person's firearms. In the recent podcast, Policing Matters, on Police One, while reading some of the comments, some of the officers highlighted the real issue at hand. For example... Officers were not satisfied with the facts the states lack resources for the mentally ill people. You know, as police officers, we encounter a lot of uh, people with mental illnesses, whether it's an actual distress call or seeking help, right? Uh, sometimes we encounter people who are suffering from bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, um, all kinds of illnesses right out there, right? Uh, some of those people are homeless, some of people actually have jobs and you know, they, they, uh, they work, they have families, they have a house, but they might be going through a tough situation and the mental illnesses are coming out of, you know, uh, because of it. Nevertheless, depending on where you patrol, uh, some people patrol in big metro areas, other um, officers patrol in more countryside, rural areas. Uh, well, some of us might not have those resources available. Um, mental hospitals, mental health professionals, uh, 24-7, you know, uh, that might leave uh, sick people to find relief using uh, some illegal controlled step- substances as uh, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, or uh, some legal uh, controlled substances as pills. Uh, so a lot of uh, self-medication and things like that, right? Even the health insurance Portability and Account- Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA, could be detrimental to prevent these crimes. Um, I don't know if you knew, but uh, physicians or mental health professionals may inform law enforcement when they believe a person might be a risk to society. In one, if one of those professionals knew the person might be planning, for example, an attack, um, if they are they're in therapy, they might say, well, you know, tomorrow I'm going to go and kill my boss and I have a gun available, you know, that I'm going to use. Well, the professional might use that information and call uh, law enforcement. However, during my research, I found this brochure uh, published by the American Hospital Association and they specified the hospital doesn't have to share the information if they don't feel it's necessary. And let me read it to you. A hospital may not disclose patient information to avert a serious threat to health or safety if the information was obtained in the course of the treatment to affect the propensity to commit criminal conduct, counseling, or therapy, or through the individual requests for such treatment, counseling, or therapy. As you can see, they don't have to do it. They should, but they don't have to do it right now by law. Other officers express concerns regarding taking property from mentally ill people. These officers stated it was better to take away the person to a facility to be evaluated than taking just weapons. Uh, This officer made a good point. Mentally ill people can find other ways to show their violence. Uh, If they already have violent tendencies, they might find other weapons such as knives vehicles, and even improvised explosive devices. As as you remember, um, back last year, here in Austin, Texas, well, we had this serial serial bomber who was placing random bombs throughout the city. Well, this young 
man, and aka terrorist, he was placing the bombs and killing random people. Well, eventually, during the investigation, he was found to have a mental illness. So, as you can see, you, it's not only firearms. Again, we need to go back and look at the root of the problem. We need to reform our current mental health laws and accommodate resources for people in need. Many states throughout the United States already have provisions in their laws which help law enforcement officers seize firearms. My home state of Texas, for example, the Health and Safety Code, Chapter 573, if you want to look it up, specifies clearly the steps for officers to take to confiscate firearms and to give these mentally ill people necessary health care that they need. When there is a substantial risk of serious harm to the person or others, and unless the person is immediately restrained and there is a belief there is not sufficient time to obtain a warrant, the person shall be taken into custody. Now, what is substantial risk? Well, it is justified by the person's current behavior or evidence of severe emotional distress and deterioration in the person's mental condition to the extent that the person cannot remain at liberty. These facts can be obtained from a credible person. Again, it can be a mental health professional, uh, a, f a relative, or somebody that is close to the person, or the officer's own observations. However, it has to be, again, credible, it has to be factual, not just uh, something that someone made up today, okay? The officer shall immediately transport a person to a hospital, mental health facility, or jail where a mental health professional must evaluate it. This statute then expands to the seizing of firearms by saying a peace officer may immediately seize any firearms found in possession of the person. After seizing a firearm under subsection, uh, the officer shall comply with the requirements of Article 18.191 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. So what is this code and what does it say? The officer shall issue a receipt to the detained person stating which weapons were taken, accompanied by a written notice of the procedures for the return of the firearms. All right, so the agency is not going to keep the firearms. The agency then, then needs to notify uh, via mail no later than the 15th day to a, uh, a closer to a close relative how this person can retrieve the guns being held by a law enforcement agency as you see in texas officer sees seizes the firearms but they will attempt to return those guns to a close relative for safekeeping this statue emphasizes the due process as well as the right to bear arms the person then will be treated and his property won't be kept by the government officials. However, once, uh, for example, let's say the person gets treated and they get out of the mental health facility, those uh, weapons can return to the rifle owner, all right? Because that person still has rights. If the person couldn't get anyone to uh, take his or her, her guns for safekeeping, the agency must sell the weapons through an authorized gun dealer and the proceeds of the sale must go into the rifle owner's account so again we're not going to keep any of that money um the the law enforcement agency must always return the person's property whether it's physically the same property that they took away or as you uh heard the the sale of the guns and the money minus some administrative fees uh will be back to the rifle owner now Let's make, let me walk you through an example. Let's say there is a person who just went through a traumatic event. For example, um, let's say an extreme domestic violence case. Based on Texas law, the persons might, you know, let's say if they suffer a emotional disturbance event. Um, let's say some PTSD, right? Where they're, they, again, they're having that episode where the family or the law enforcement believe the best course of action is to take this person for treatment, right? Now, there are some weapons in the home. The officer seizes the weapons and immediately transfer them to a relative following 
uh, state law, right? Uh, there are certain things that need to be followed. I'm not going to explain them right here, but there are certain things that you have to do as a law enforcement agency. So if the person then is evaluated for med- uh, by the medical professional and they believe it was an isolated incident, the weapons can be lawfully returned to the rightful owner. In those states with red flag gun laws, they are not specifying this issue. So this process either could take longer or not happen at all, which might be placing the person at risk. Uh, Think about this. If the female just went over this scenario where her uh, ex was really violent and he promised that he was going to come back and he's still large, they have, you know, they issued a warrant and he hasn't been caught. Well, what if he breaks in in the middle of the night? Would it be safer for her to defend herself and uh, her kids if she has any? Or would it be easier for the red flag gun laws to be cookie cut and say, well, nope, you had a mental illness. Sorry, you don't have no guns anymore. That's a problem and a big one. All right. So every situation is different. Uh, Each jurisdiction should have their own freedom to analyze, investigate and conclude what is the best action for the person, because not all uh, cases are the same. And he should analyze if this mental distress episode was isolated and is a safety concern for the community. Now, I'm not going to say all these uh, new red flag gun laws are bad. Okay, so some research uh, from Connecticut, uh, it shows it's been reducing suicides in the state since 1999 when this law was enacted. Uh, Taking this information into consideration, maybe red flag laws, gun laws should consider the rights of the person and not just make it like even for everybody because that's not the case you know there's a lot of laws that that's not the case either so many people believe if they seek help like for example depression or possible suicidal thoughts well the second amendment now will be dismissed and their weapons will be confiscated however when when you go in a um but purchase a gun, right? And you they run a background check. Well, one of the questions is if you ever been in a mental health institution or you've been deemed um, insane, right, by by medical professionals. Well, right now, the eighteen U.S. Code eighteen section nine two two subsection G four states the person who is committed to a mental health institution voluntarily won't find themselves disqualified for the ownership of firearms. So if you believe you have a mental illness and you seek help, that doesn't disqualify you, okay? So don't don't think that, uh, oh, you know, automatically you're like, oh, well, they're going to take my guns. Well, that's not going to happen, right? Unless you live in this one of these states who does have red flag gun laws, well, that might be a problem. So that's another issue. So what are the consequences of these laws? Back in 2018, Maryland law enforcement officers attempted to execute a seizure warrant on a man who actually had mental health problems. While speaking with the subject, the officers began the execution of the order, which prompted the subject to start a confrontation, which unfortunately ended his life. The subject was holding a gun um, really tight, right? So the officers were trying to take the gun away and one of the officers ended up shooting him and killing him, right? Um, that's going to happen, all right? A lot of people, like I said, they might not feel like they have a problem or they might be working on getting the problem solved. And now here comes the government and, hey, this is what's better for, for you. We know what's better for you, though. And now they're taking their guns. Other problems or consequences are... Many people just miss their court date. They are legally declared um, sane again, or you know they're uh, back into their normal, and unfortunately they don't get their guns back. Some the, some of the problems are legal fees. Some of the problems can be uh, they cannot get get uh, any time you know of work. Um, some life changes, they move things like that. Um, you know, going through the court system is not free, as you know. So that costs money. That is a lot of problems. And I mean, you just adding more laws instead of just using the ones that we already have. 
Now, in my opinion, more information plus the acknowledgement of the public official is needed to help people with permanent or temporary mental illnesses. You know, as police officers, uh, we cannot take people's rights away. That's definitely really, really legal, right? Uh, neither should the government nor the legislature should do it without the appropriate due process. Uh, there, uh, police officers are placed at extreme risk by enforcing these uh, legal documents and these laws because we're the ones executing those uh, orders. Uh, I believe more states with the red flags gun law should base those laws on Texas legislature. Here in Texas, we believe in the protection of the public as well as the protection of each individual's right. So... This is a really, really complicated issue, and um, is there's no easy answer to it. Gun laws are complicated. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of the free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Please let me know what are your thoughts on these new red flag gun laws. Please follow me and... Facebook, Instagram, and any other social media at Tactical Blue. Very soon, I'll be opening or getting uh, uh, my website ready with full podcasts and other memes and fun stuff. And uh, you see, you see, it's gonna be good. So uh, it's taking me a little bit of time because I'm trying to put it together. I guess I'm a perfectionist, so it wants to look good, right? But let me know what you think, and if you like or dislike this podcast. Let me know. Be safe out there. Don't be an ass. Be an asset to your department, to your family, and to yourself.